God bless you, everyone. This is Pastor Dorothy bringing you greetings once again from God's Harbor Church uh, for our midweek Bible class. Our senior pastors there, Pastor Odell and his wife, Lady Robin McFarland. I am so elated to be here this week to bring you greetings for our, our new message, our new series, or our new topic is uh, for such a time as this. Um, I have um, been searching and looking in scripture just for this purpose of uh, bringing this message and and as I searched the scriptures, it came upon this, and I it just it just so reminded me of why we're here, why are God's people here at this time? You know, many people ask that question even today. Why am I here? What is going on, God? I don't know what to do next, or we we don't know what's what's coming forward in the future. And so, um, I think this will answer some of your questions uh, that you may have in regards to what ifs or why God or uh, how could you allow this to happen, God? You know, um, this pandemic and the situation we're in right now is no surprise to God. You know, it's surprising to us because we're we're living in these times and we're seeing this and we've never seen this before. Uh, if you talk to someone who's uh, even a hundred years old, uh, you can hear them. You would hear them say, "You know, uh, I have never seen anything like this." And so, um, this is a surprise to us, and it's it's kind of eye opening to us, and it's. Um, frustrating to some, depressing to others, um, stressful on, on, on so many, but this is no surprise to God. He sees all, he knows all, he's everywhere at all times. This is not surprising to him. And actually he's seen it many, many times over and it's in scripture many times over the things that um, people have gone through, the people of God has gone have gone through. And and today I'm gonna go over uh, certain subjects in the, in the Bible and we'll, we'll show you that. And show you how they dealt with them. And then also show you why we're here. You know, you're here in a very peculiar time. I'm here in a very peculiar time. Um, and God has allowed us to be here. God has blessed us to be here. It's no surprise to him that we were born at this time. And so um, we should take full advantage of it and really do what God has for us to do at this time. Because we were born here for a reason at this moment and at this time in 2020. And so uh, today we're going to go over a little bit of that and just encourage you to, to, to just continue to seek God and find out what he wants you to do at this time. Because every one of us, believe it or not, has a role to play. Just like in the scriptures uh, during the times when they had the pandemics and then the famines and the crises that they had, there was a role that everyone had to play in it. And so uh, there's a role also that we have to play in this particular pandemic. And so we don't want to miss that role. We want to uh, grab hold of it and we want to make sure that we're using it, um, doing what God has for us to do in this time. So uh, before I go on, I want to admonish you and encourage you to continue to give. Um, as you know, the holidays are approaching us and uh, there's so many families that are without. There's so many families who are in need of just bare necessities such as food and uh, uh, clothing and um, different uh, cleaning items and things like that. So uh, do uh, continue to give uh, in this upcoming couple weeks. We'll, we're approaching Thanksgiving now and then Christmas after that, not, not long after that. It'll, surely, I'm sure it'll, it'll come as soon as, soon as you're, you know, as soon as we're thinking about it, it kind of approaches us very fast. So. Uh, that's coming, those te seasons are coming up and many families are in need. So please continue to give to your ministries, continue to give if you don't have a ministry to give to and you are looking for somewhere to plant a seed, uh, that information will be located here on the screen. So uh, we admonish you to please, please uh, continue to give to ministry. Also, if you have not uh, subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do that uh, at your earliest convenience, uh, even after you get off of here or while you're on here try to subscribe to the channels because it keeps you up to date on the things that we're doing. Not only things that we're doing, it causes you to grow spiritually uh, and even naturally. So please uh, subscribe if you haven't done that. So we're going to get right into the word of the Lord right now. Um, we're going to start here with uh, Joseph in the book of Genesis. So the title of this message is for such a time as this, for such a time as this. And Joseph, who's one of my favorite characters in the Bible, I love um, 
his his character. I love how Joseph handled himself. I love the uh, the way in which he um, his life is portrayed in the Word of God. It's almost Christ like uh, it, it, with respect to Christ. It's almost Christ like the way he he displayed his love, his concern, his um, genuine uh, love for his family. And how he just had so much wisdom and how he stored up when they had the famine, the big famine that, that we're going to see um, in this story. So um, the first one is Joseph. And Joseph is found, or this particular scripture on Joseph is found in Genesis 37 and 6 through 9. But we're going to do 6, 7, and 9. We're going to skip a couple of them in between and do 6, 7, and 9. And if you don't have a Bible, pull out your electronic devices, pull up the Bible on there. If you have a Bible, a paper Bible, that would be wonderful. But follow through with me with the Word of God because I want you to learn and, and study for yourself and see the uh, scriptures for yourself. Begin to look a little further and deeper into the scriptures so that you can uh, grow by that. And so we're going to just get right into the Word of God. Genesis 37 and 6 says this. So if I had to set the stage for you, I'll, I'll, I'll do it this way. So Joseph was a young man, probably around 20 years old. He was a young guy. He wasn't that old. Uh, he had quite a few brothers. Actually, he had 11 to be exact. And uh, he was uh, next to the youngest, not the youngest, but he was next to the youngest. And, they, and Joseph was a man that, a young man that... Um, God began to give dreams to. He would show him dreams and show him what he would was going to, how he was going to use him. And so Joseph, at this point, when God began to deal with him and show him the dreams, Joseph began to show it to his family. And we'll read here in verse number six and what he said, in six and seven. So he said, Joseph said to them, his brothers, please hear this dream which I have dreamed. Verse number seven says, there, there, were, there we were, binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And indeed, your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. And verse number nine says this, then he dreamed still another dream and told this to his brothers and said, look, I have dreamed another dream. And this time, the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars bowed down to me. And so, what God was beginning to show Joseph in this, God was showing Joseph, and he was preparing vision in Joseph. He was preparing G vision in Joseph for the future. And Joseph was, like I said, he was about 20 years old, young guy. He had never experienced God before like this. And so, or in, in, in any matter. So he was beginning to, now God was beginning to show Joseph who he really was and show him how he was going to use him. And he began to give him dreams and visions and he was giving him a vision for the future. Now his brothers, when, he, when Joseph told the brothers this, they immediately got upset with him because they were offended that my little brother would, would have this great vision like this and we don't have this this kind of, God has not given us this kind of vision. So basically they were saying, who do you think you are? That's basically what they were saying. Well, Joseph ignored all of that because of the love he had for his brother. He said, I'm going to still reach out to them and I'm going to show you this other dream. And he was excited about this because he had never seen anything like this. And if you could imagine a young man's excitement for what God is getting ready to do in his life, but he had no idea this was God. He just, he was, he saw this vision and he said, I needed to share this with someone and he shared it with his brothers well i want to say this uh as god was preparing joseph for the vision that he had for for him as well as the brothers and his family don't hate or despise your brother's vision if someone shares their vision with you don't hate or despise it despise it because it could be your future deliverance and so that's the mistake his brothers made they despised what god was doing in his life because of the fact that they didn't get the same revelation or same vision and he was younger than them. So they looked down upon him. 
But God was beginning to use Joseph for not only his future, but theirs as well. And if you read further into the story, you'll, you'll find out, and I, I encourage you to do that, you'll find out how God used Joseph to deliver his entire family. Not only his entire family, he, did, he used Joseph to deliver an entire nation. Because if you will read, if you continue to read, you'll find out that uh, there was a great famine in the earth uh, a few years later. There was a great famine uh, seven years later, actually a great, well, after God elevated Joseph to be uh, sitting in, in, in the king's, uh, as the governor in the king's house, then you'll find out seven years after that, God began to use Joseph to prepare for the famine. And in preparing for the famine, what God did was save the entire nation, all the nations all around them came to Joseph and Egypt to get food to take care of their families because there was a great famine in the earth. So that's what God was actually elevating Joseph to this point and, and trying to get his family uh, in the same mindset that he was going to not, he was going to use this Joseph as well as his entire family to save nations. And so um, God was preparing Joseph for vision or he was giving jo Joseph vision. Even at a young age, he did this. Our next subject we're going to talk about is Moses. Many of you know about Moses. We've heard Moses over the years so many times, the story of Moses. And um, we want to go back a little bit to when Moses was a baby, a little child, and how Moses got started. So we'll turn to Exodus 2 and 3 through 7. We'll turn there and read that. So Moses was, I'll set the stage for you here. Moses was, of course, uh, a baby. He had no idea what was going on. Well, his mom and dad um, was, in, uh, was enslaved, as all the, Egypt, all the Israelites were at that time in Egypt. And uh, they were having children. And the Pharaoh decided that he did not want uh, the e Israelites to expand or grow bigger than the Egyptians because they were having children, they were multiplying, they were being fruitful, as the Bible says, and they were expanding and growing and and outnumbering the Egyptians. And Pharaoh saw that and he said, we have to stop this. And so he decided to make a decree that he was going to kill all of the firstborn males throw them into the Nile River, and well, before that, he tried to have the midwives, let's go back a little bit, he wanted the midwives, the Egyptian midwives, to uh, basically, when they bring the child out of the womb of the, the, the Israelite woman, he wanted to have them murdered, have the child murdered. But the midwife said, told uh, Pharaoh, he said, well, the way these uh, Israelites of having children is so fast, we cannot even keep Keep count of it. We can't even control it as you want us to. So his next step was, okay, well, when they're born, throw them into the Nile River and get rid of them. Kill them that way. But I need you to destroy these people because they're outnumbering, they're outgrowing us, and I'm, I'm threatened that they're going to overtake us. And so at this point, uh, Moses' mom got pregnant. And she looked upon this child and saw that this child, and I know this was the eyes of God, that gave her this vision and began to uh, use her, her husband, her, her daughter to work to save this child. And so they, all, they worked in collaboration, especially the mom and the daughter, worked in collaboration to save this child. So she, the mother, Moses' mother, formed a basket and put the baby inside the basket and said, I'll set him in the Nile River and cause him just to float down. And uh, in doing that, instead of throwing him in there or destroying him, she wanted to save him. So she put him in this basket at a certain time. So she made sure that at this perfect time, she put the baby in this basket and caused him to go down at the time when Pharaoh's daughter was bathing. And so we'll read that. Verse number three says this. But when she could no longer hide him, she was trying to hide Moses, but be, but um, he had gotten so big to the point where he he couldn't be hidden before he couldn't be hidden anymore. So uh, she was hiding him when he was an infant, a small child. She was uh, making sure she take care of him. 
feeding him and he grew to a, a certain age where she could no longer hide him. He was not uh, really big yet, but he was still a baby where he was he was able to be fit, fit inside of a basket. And so, but when she could no longer hide him, she took an, an ark of bulrush for him. He daubed it with asphalt and pitch, put the child in it and laid it in, in the reeds in the riverbanks. And his sister, Moses' sister, stood afar off to know or to see what would happen uh, or would be done to him. So she made sure she watched and see to make sure he doesn't, he didn't get hurt or drowned. And so verse number five says this, Then the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe in the river as they did in those days. And her maidens walked along the riverside. And when she saw the ark or the basket among the reeds, she sent her maids to get it. And so Moses' mom particularly put the basket in the, in the Nile River and caused it to float down at the perfect and exact time that Pharaoh's daughter would be bathing in the river. She had a plan. And she put, she sent the maid to get it. Pharaoh's daughter did. Verse number six. And when she opened it, she saw the child and behold, the baby wept. The baby cried. So she had compassion on the baby and said, this is a Hebrew child. She noticed it right away. And then the sister at the exact time came up and said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call a nurse for you? From the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child that she may nurse the child for you and so they had a plan and a purpose the reason why they were doing this so at the exact time time that the basket uh Pharaoh's daughter stumbled upon the basket uh the daughter of well the, the, the sister of Moses saw this whole thing and said okay because she was looking and, 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 and anticipating her doing this she came up and asked Pharaoh's daughter and said, hey, do you want me to go and cause the Hebrew slaves to nurse? Do you want her to nurse the child for you? So she got her to do, she said, yes, of course, the next verse you'll read, yes, of course, uh, she can do this. I, I would rather for her to do it than I, because of course, that's what they did in those days. The slaves actually would do the nursing, do the cleaning, do the building. They did everything because they were slave. They were enslaved in Egypt. And so uh, what God was doing here with Moses was he was preparing him for deliverance. As a baby, he was born to deliver Israel out of Egypt. And so um, in verse number eight, the very next verse, you'll read that uh, Pharaoh's daughter told Moses' sister when she asked him did she want him to do she want her to to get a slave to a Hebrew slave to do to nurse the child so actually Pharaoh's daughter next response was uh, I will pay her to do this isn't this amazing how God works God will cause your enemy to be your provision he will cause your enemy to provide uh or to pay you for what you should be doing naturally. What you naturally should be doing. What Moses' and mom was naturally supposed to do. Uh, she ended up getting paid by Pharaoh's daughter to do it. During this time of turmoil. During this time of traumatic events that's going on in our lives. God will cause these things to turn in our favor. I remember years ago. Um, we, My husband and I before we had any business that we had. Uh, years, probably about 25 years ago or so, we were very, 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 uh, had, had very little money, I should say. We were very little money. Uh, my husband had a little job that he would go to uh, early in the mornings and uh, deep in the winter times, he would have to ride public transportation because we didn't have a car. And we had a little apartment and we were trying to make it. It had, had five children at the time and, and so didn't have very much money. And so um, I remember, uh, once uh, we were trying to make ends meet and, and my husband went out and got went to the store and got this little package of ground beef and it was just a little, not even one pound of ground beef. And um, when he brought it home to cook, he was with one of his friends and he, his friend said, is your wife gonna make that work, that one little 
pound, half pound or so of ground beef? Is she going to make that work for your entire family? And my husband's response was, yes, she can make it work. And so uh, we did, of course, God, God, with God's provision, we made it work. He multiplied uh, the fish and, and, and loaves. So he multiplied that, that ground beef for us to make our, our family, um, to make their meals so they can get, get fed. And so we did this over and over again, time and time again, when we didn't have the finances to, to meet the needs for our, our families, uh, food, uh, uh, some of our bills and things, we would make it work. You know, God would intervene and make it work in our favor. And so um, this went on for years until we got to where we are now. But where we are now actually is where what God was doing in 25 years ago was he was preparing us for where we are now. And so uh, now when we are doing, working in our businesses, we know how to uh, be efficient in, a, in, a, in certain things that we have. We know how to make it work because God used those experiences for us even right now in the business that we have now. And so um, this is what God was doing. Uh, he'll, do for, he'll do for you. He'll, he'll use these experiences where you are to actually help you in the future. And so uh, don't neglect or don't um, uh, try to get out of the experiences that God has you in. Even now, he'll use those things for your future. And he has, our tests and trials are are just a precursor. Or just, they're just a, uh, a thing that God is using for us to uh, bless us in the future. And so um, we, have to, we have to make sure that we are using the, being efficient in what God has for us, whether it's financially, uh, whether it's our gifts and our talents or whatever it is, we have to be efficient in what God has uh, given us and put in our hands. And so um, this is what God would, did in Moses' life. And so our next one is Esther. We're going to go to Esther real quickly. We're going to move right through this. We're going to go to Esther 4.14. Let's go there really quickly. Esther 4.14 says this. Now, I want to set the stage here for you, Esther, for you with Esther as well. Esther was a woman. Esther was a woman in the Bible. And Esther was an orphan. She had no mom and dad. She only had her cousin. Some people say Mordecai was her uncle. Some people say it was her cousin. But he was a relative of hers that actually took her in. He was older than she was. He took her in and he kind of raised her. Well, Esther was a very beautiful woman very beautiful to the point where she got the king's attention. And so um, when she got the king's attention, the king wanted her to come in and, and he wanted to make her his queen. Well, uh, she was a Jew. The problem was she was an Israeli. She was a Jewish young lady. And so um, she had certain uh, um, insecurities about herself. She was an orphan, like I said before. She didn't have a mom and dad. She was uh, poor. She she only had uh, the 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 bare, the bare, bare necessities that she, that she had. And so she, she was very, very poor. She, she was an orphan. She didn't, so she had the insecurities that she had, uh, um, that she was dealing with. And so, uh, in those days, it was another time when God was trying to, uh, use Esther to, he was, he was actually preparing her platform. He was preparing her platform and he was building self-confidence in her because she didn't have a lot of that. And so let's read real quickly what Esther did. So we'll go to 414, Esther 414. And this is her cousin or uncle Mordecai telling her this because they were at a point where, uh, then this nation was beginning to, um, uh, Persia was beginning to come against the Jews and did, wanted to totally annihilate them and totally destroy them and wipe them off the face of the earth, just as the previous uh, situations that we, we read in, with Joseph and Moses. It was, it was a, a, a situation where it was just devastating. And, and Esther had been given a platform as I said before, God had get, was giving Esther a platform. He was building confidence in her. He was trying to trying to do, use her to deliver and help the, the, the Jewish people continue to, to live and not be annihilated. And so Mordecai told Esther this. He said, this is very serious. They're talking about 
the extinction, extinction of our nation. And he said, verse number 14, for, I, for if you remain completely silent at this time, Relief and de relief and de deliverance will arise from the Jews from another place, but you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this? And that's the title of my message today, for such a time as this. We are in this pandemic. We are in this earth. We're, we have been born for such a time as this. If you are a people of God, if you are a, per, a, a woman or man, it doesn't matter. Just as you see here, that God used this woman to to uh, to cut off or stop the total extinction of the Jewish people, to to stop the total extinction of a nation, and so. She felt insecure because she was a woman and she was an orphan and she was poor and she had all these things against her. And some of us now feel uh, uh, very insecure because we don't know if God can use us, if God will use us. What if this disease overtakes us? What if it, we get the disease? Many, many things are plaguing our minds and plaguing our hearts in regards to this pandemic. But God is wanting you to know he has placed you and he has positioned you for such a time as this. He has placed me, he has positioned me for such a time as this. And, and Mordecai told Esther, he said, if you be silent, if you don't uh, uh, allow God to use you, if you don't allow God to speak to through you, if you don't allow God to, to use you to glorify his kingdom for such a time as this, he said, somebody is going to rise from somewhere else and God is going to use them. He was saying basically, so why not let it be you? And so this is what God is saying to us. Why not let it be you? It's going to be somebody because God is going to get the glory out of this whole situation. As I said before, God is not unaware of what's going on. He is not surprised by it. He is not taken aback by it. God has seen this before. He's seen worse than this before. And he's not surprised by this. And so in order to get the glory out of what is going on right now, because God will get the glory in the end. When we're past this thing, when we're over this thing, God will be glorified. And, and he said, Mordecai was telling Esther this, it's important for you to know this. And it's important for all of us to know this right now, that God will use someone to glorify his kingdom during this time. So he's saying, why not let it be you? He said, if you keep silent, if you don't, if you, if you, you act fearful or if you, you, you succumb, not act, or if you succumb to the fear that the enemy is trying to place upon you and he's all around us trying to place fear, um, trying to place distractions. This is one of his biggest tactics. He wants to distract you from what God is doing in your life, in my life. He wants to distract you from that and he wants to cause fear. He wants to cause stress and distress and make you think, where is God? God sees this. He knows what's going on. And he wants to use you and me for such a time as this. And so God was trying to use uh, Esther to show her the platform he's given her and how to use it wisely. Whatever platform God has given you in this time, use it wisely. Whatever gift he's given you at this time, use it wisely. Use it to benefit the kingdom for such a time as this. And so I wanted to say this also to the women, never underestimate the power of a woman of God. And this is what Esther was trying to find and trying to fill out in her life. She was a young, young lady. She was very young. And so she had no idea how, how God moved. She had no idea if God was going to use her or if God was using her. So she was very nervous to approach the king uh, and ask him for help. Even though she had, she had become queen, God had made her and given her a platform as queen next to the king. And so she, was, she had to approach the king to ask him for help. And she was very nervous about this because she's never had anyone of that stature in front of her. And she was very insecure by it. But Mordecai put some wisdom in her and told her, this is your time. This is time for you to to use this platform for God's glory. And so 
she did it she did it scared she did it scared she did it nervous but she did it and so never underestimate the power of a godly woman and our last person which every one of us know about and most of us are well acquainted with is Jesus we'll go to Matthew 2:13 we know the story about Jesus and his crucifixion and his resurrection. Many times we don't speak about Jesus' birth. And so Jesus was, I'll tell the story uh, to set the stage for you a little bit. Jesus was, uh, of course, born of Mary uh, and his stepfather, Joseph. And so at the time when Jesus was born, Herod the king heard about this king that was going to be born. He had heard the news, the good news of the, the, the king coming of the Lord. And many people around the nations had heard that. And he was one that got into his ears and he heard it. Well, when he heard it, he said, I, he came up with a plan. He said, okay, well, I, what I'll do is I'll kill all of the firstborn that are born around this time that, is, that he's scheduled to be born. And this time they would follow the stars. And when the stars settled in the east in the sky, they would know the timing. This is how they set times and seasons at that time. And so he said, and around this time, what time is he supposed to be born? He found that out. And he said, I'll kill all the firstborn. That's, that way I'll stop this king from coming and taking my kingship. And so this is what he was afraid of. This is what the king was intimidated by. He was intimidated by the fact that this king was going to rise up and take my position. That's the only thing he was concerned about. He didn't want this king to come in, in on his territory. And so he said, I'll kill all the babies that are born at this time. And so Herod tried to do this, but God prepared Jesus to save the entire world. So this was that important. It was that important for, for Jesus not to be to die at this point because the scriptures had to be fulfilled. That he was going to live, he was going to do miracle after miracle after miracle. And then at a certain point in time, he was going to be... Uh, uh, hoisted to the cross crucified but then rise again all that was fulfilled was was prophesied by the prophets in the days of old and so god used his mom and joseph to flee the country before herod and his people got to jesus's area so let's read this so we're in uh matthew 2 13 now, when, when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord. Now, they are the wise men that uh, Herod had sent over to spy on and find out where Jesus was. So he sent the wise men because they were, they were one that studied the stars and they would study scripture to find out when this child Jesus was going to be born. When, this king, when was this king coming to uh, save the world? And so... Herod decided that he wanted to meet with the wise men, find out where this child Jesus was, and then I'll use them to locate him, and then I'll have my people come and destroy, destroy him. So he told him, he said, when you find out where he is, come back and let me know, and then I'll, I'll take care of the rest. And so at this point, this is talking about the wise men. Now, when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Jesus is dad, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And so what God did was, just like I told you, he knows all things. He sees what's going on. He sent an angel, and he said, I need to talk to you, Jason, Joseph. I need you to get rid of, get out of this country until Herod dies and take the child with you because there's someone coming after his life prematurely. He was sent here. God sent him here to die, but not at that time. You see how God knows all things? He sees all things. He's everywhere at all times. He knew what Herod's plans were and nobody told him in the natural because God is all knowing. God is all seeing. And he's everywhere at all times. And so what you notice here 
is that God used all of these all of these figures here he used them in their youth he used all of these while they while they were young and he prepared them the most important thing though he saw them while they were young and he but he prepared them first he prepared them first preparation is key he prepared them first he did not uh, just throw them into things he prepared them from their youth for such a time as this and he's preparing so many of us the same way for such a time as this. He has prepared us and he's still preparing us to know what to do next. God is not surprised by what's going on. He's preparing us and he's prepared us for such a time as this. He has his people in these positions, in these in the earth for this time. He It was no mistake that he had you born in the year that you were born in. It's no mistake that he had you with the parents that you have, the brothers and sisters that you have. That's no mistake to God. All that was in his perfect plan. And he has also another perfect plan that he has during and after this pandemic. He has a perfect plan for your life and for my life. And I want to encourage you by that. I want to encourage every one of us to know that God is in control. God is not out of control. This is not out of control to God. He has his, his, his hands working in intricately way, in intricate ways during this pandemic. This is no surprise to him. He's not taken aback by this. He knows what's going on. And he's prepared you and I for such a time as this. And I want to pray for you. Father, we just thank you for everyone out there who's listening. We thank you, Father, for uh, encouraging their hearts. We thank you, Father, for bringing in them into the knowledge of your uh, sovereignty, how you're sovereign, and you know what's going on. God, but I pray, Lord God, right now that you would touch the hearts of your people, the minds of your people, Father, in the name of Jesus, and encourage their hearts, bring them in, bring them, bring their faith alive, Lord God, to know that you are working in the on their behalf even right now. Everyone who's listening, God, I thank you, Father, for increasing their faith, encouraging their hearts, uplifting their spirits in the name of Jesus, even during this pandemic. I thank you for it. And God, I thank you for those who are who don't know you. And I pray this prayer. I ask that you pray this prayer after me. Father, I thank you for dying for my sins. I thank you and I believe, Lord, that you are the Lord, the Lord that the Lord thy God. And you died on the cross for my sins. I thank you for dying for my sins. I renounce sin as it is in my life right now. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And if you prayed that prayer, God has saved you. He is delivering you. He's setting you free even right now. You may not feel anything. You may not see anything right away. But he's doing it because you asked him to. And he said, if you pray a simple prayer. He said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that he's risen from the dead, you should be saved. And believe me, you are saved. And until next time, may God bless you. May he encourage you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. In Jesus' name.